all right guys just before uh, the video starts could you do me a big favor click that subscribe button and then click the bell icon to receive notifications of future posts and also if you want become a member and support my channel that way by clicking join thank you and enjoy the video all right guys today you've got an um, interesting video um, i am currently with sean at car and cab care um, we are going to do a little review of the ford transit plug-in hybrid ford transit plug-in hybrid also known as the Torreno. Transit Custom. Transit Custom is a Torreno. Tornio. Yeah. Can never pronounce it. <laughs> um, <laughs> so we've got that today. I'm going to have a little look. I might even be possibly putting a deposit on it maybe this week. I'm very uh, interested um, to see. Also, I'm doing a little video tomorrow. Um, I'm asking all the UberX drivers that I know and all the UberX L drivers I know to send in the average in and going to do a video about that tomorrow to see if it's worth going from UberX to UberXL. All right, guys, enjoy the video, and I'm going to have a little um, scope around at the moment. Also, to add, the one I'm looking at at the moment is um, converted to an Acne, a taxi, but obviously this has just been specially modified for a taxi, which he can do, but obviously he also does them for private hire as well. All right, guys. So at the moment, I'll start off with the boot. So it's got a full lid. So with the seats up, you've got a huge boot area. They can fit multiple suitcases in if you're doing the airport runs. You can get eight suitcases in that. Eight, eight, eight suitcases, yeah. You've got the built-in seats uh, with the drink table, so if you're doing executive work, you can put the seats down. Down in the yep. centre. We can also turn the seats around to be forward-facing for long journeys, uh, or we can take a seat out like we're demonstrating here to make uh, an area where you can put buggies. Yeah. Now, obviously this vehicle is just a transit custom. Yeah. It's not a wheelchair exit packing. It is um, a ticking box vehicle yeah. that we can adapt to provide services rather than it saying hackney. Yeah. Even though this is hackney plated in Sefton, uh, as a working hackney, and drivers can come and test drive it for the day and work it. Yeah. Um, completely free of charge um, to see what the future events is going to be. But we've also got these on Liverpool, Sefton, Nosley, uh, as minibuses. We've got them as Hackneys, loads of them, you know, uh, down south or South Wales or Denbyshire. So, as an example, obviously, this exact one, if you literally remove the, the taxi writing yeah. and removed, obviously, the light off the roof. Yeah. You can have it as a private hire. You can have everything yeah. you've got here as a private hire yeah. and have the security of the screen if you wanted it because right. it's all made by Ford. So what's so good about the Ford um, Customs is this is the reason why multiple councils uh, are very finicky with the um, seat layouts. Yeah. So if you go for, say, a, like a Vito, all the seats are facing forward. So within Sefton Council, which is the one I'm registered with, you cannot climb over any other passengers to get in and out of the vehicle as like a health and safety thing. So you have to have either a seat removed like this one, or um, you have to have them facing each other. So no one can climb in and out to get in and out the vehicle. So that's why the Ford uh, Custom is perfect for this because you can have these two seats. There's another seat here. So he's got it removed in this uh, acne example. So you just look under it, man. Yeah. There's your original rail. There you go. And the seat can be stored in the back. And even private tyre drivers can have these. Yeah, with, um, with the five in the back if you wanted. With the five in the back. Or, um, this can also be stored behind the seat. Yeah. And then you can put the seats back in whichever way you want. That's perfect. So you can have then your six seats facing. So as a, from an Uber standpoint, yeah. this would be a perfect Uber XL vehicle because you'd have three seats facing each other. You'll have a big boot. And then obviously... Um, it qualifies for, for Lily all councils because obviously no one's climbing over each other. Of course, you can have extra handles added. I mean, Ford, they're the original Ford anchor points and we just make them yellow because we made it hackney, but you can have these in black. And also okay. you've got this as well as a nice yeah, feature, isn't it? Yeah, it comes out, it lights the floor up. Perfect. Very nice, nice time, looks very professional. And also you do these screens for private hire as well, don't you? Yeah, we do them. Yeah, it's called the E-Pass. Um, and it's got a perfect thing to come because you've actually driven it. I have driven it, yeah. And your wife was in the back. Yeah, she was enjoying the journey, wasn't she? And uh, you've got four um, USB points for people. Perfect. You your drink holders. Drink holders as well, which are just and, just uh, normal things, day-to-day yeah. -day things that make life easier, doesn't it? Yeah. But like you said, if you've got two 
passengers so you can sat here yeah. and have this middle one down and have your cups and everything else yeah, absolutely and also Brilliant. people can literally turn up uh, you know we've got like little cowlings around the lights to say that you press uh, press here make it hackney five but on and off. you know people can control their own heat in the back um and of course it's very fuel efficient we can you know put like even on the private tires we can put the little stickers on there to to demonstrate where to open it put the little stickers on the handles um all this can be done on the private tire perfect it's entirely up to whatever driver wants Whereas in, you know, this is at Hackney and we've also made a traditional uh, meter work extra lights. So when you put it onto pay, you can actually just illuminate the area that you're paying. And it also lights up where your handles are so you can see where you're going to pull. Perfect. So, and we're not having to put switches in because we've chosen a meter that actually does it. To yeah. simplify it for the Hackney trade, they like traditional so this has got traditional, like it's going back all to our fairways days where we have our intercom on all day long, you have your radio on and it's not interfering and you can talk to people and listen to the football or do whatever you want and also be secure. Brilliant. Okay. Right, so at the moment I'm in the, um, the driver's seat which is extremely comfy. You've got multiple cup holders and obviously loads of storage. You've got the, um, the entertainment system. Which has got uh, Apple Pay, Android, Apple, Apple iCloud, iCloud, Android, Android Auto. Yeah. It's got everything you need. Yeah. Obviously, more cup holders. You got your USB chargers. Nice cover. Nice cover. Got Obviously your low be... gear automatic. Oh, look, nice you got a low gear as well. Yeah. Um, as soon as the vehicle drives off, um, it locks, and you can actually deadlock the exterior so nobody can get in. That's so if you, so you're having a butty and that, just deadlock that, and nobody's getting in. Perfect. Perfect. Okay. So it's nice and secure. Right, obviously with the high being a, obviously a hybrid um, bus, it can be quite um, complicated to some. Yeah. Um, and obviously, um, Sean has explained it to me quite um, in detail. And the simplest way to put it is you've got your electric on the left there, and you've got your petrol on the right. Um, and then you've got your mode button mode there. Button, yeah. yeah. So when you press your mode buttons. Hey, what well, you can explain as well okay so normal that is how uh, the drivers would use it um and it would take the electric slowly all day it's like hybrid hybrid yeah. and then the next one's all electric so as soon as you turn on the uh, the vehicle it will automatically do that and it does that for a reason is because these have been designed to be vans the average commuting for a van is around 30 40 miles a day yeah. so of course this can let you just run on full electric go home engine not on and then charge back up and then can be completely free and no no emissions whatsoever yeah whereas our drivers unfortunately a few of the drivers uh, are literally they charge up at night or don't charge up at all and they switch the vehicle on and they're driving around in zero and it then goes a hizzy fit because it's not designed to be driven with no electric yeah so that's causing obviously causing problems then. problems uh, then it has to reset itself and charge back up so ford have made this vehicle so we can drive on full electric all day and preserve energy later like all normal hybrids engine drives wheels yeah. engine does not drive wheels so what's good about ford is they've made this so it's adaptable for everyone taxi drivers van drivers yeah day-to-day -day people doing the school run etc etc so you've got your so that's your um, full petrol that one's your uh, obviously full, full electric. electric that's how it's going to be yeah that's ev later the next one so what's the ev later for uh, basically it's, it's like the hybrid um but it's giving you a little bit more power than the hybrid mode so it's literally uh it takes a little bit more electricity out there so maybe it's a bit more more performance but less saving the ev for later pretty much right and okay. then uh, when you get down to five miles then you need to put it back onto full petrol to which, then charge back up which is ev charge that's full petrol full petrol yeah, yeah. so the way um obviously sean has explained it to me then so when you fully charge your car you've got normal operation which is full hybrid so it uses a bit of the petrol a bit of the electric and then when it drops down on the left there the 16 is um the electric left and that's 91 miles in the range because obviously what's in the fuel so once you've used your hybrid mode once that blue turns to like five you switch it to full petrol full petrol ev charge 
and then you drive around in the full petrol for a bit and then that'll, that electric will go back up and then you can flick it back to hybrid or full EV if you want yeah. and just play it like that okay. and that's the best way to obviously work the electric system Okay, so if we look at the miles per gallon there, you look at that, you go, oh, that's pretty crap, 22.7. Yeah. So this has uh, just come back off a of higher and it's been driven incorrectly. Um, as soon as it ran out on full electric, it was drove it round on zero all day. So of course, it then uh, put the engine management light onto it and it's literally just driving on survival mode because it hasn't got any electricity stored. This is 100% electric. The driver was told as soon as you get down to five miles to put it back onto full petrol, which he decided, oh, I'm not bothering. And uh, I would anticipate didn't even charge it and just drove it on zero all the time. Right. If you do that, then the vehicle is driving hungry all day long. So we don't want them to be driven like that. So it's very important that we, we know that. So you've got control of how you drive this vehicle and it needs to be driven in the way that it was designed. So if you're driving up Snowdonia, for instance, you would go, oh, right, okay, I've got loads of electricity stored here. I've been driving on the motorway on full petrol, preserving all my electricity for when I need it. I then put it onto full EV, <clears throat> drive up the hill, and then at the top of the hill, then switch it back over to, uh, EV later or hybrid or you know because you'll charge going down the hill yeah all the way <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah you'll literally see it go do 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 all the way back up again uh, and you know depending on what electricity you got you always have to put it back into full petrol right so you've obviously got loads of drivers using these and loads of companies right so what would you say uh, the average people if drove correctly the average people are getting in Malva Gallon at this moment in time they're in the 50s purely based on that it's cold yeah so we demonstrated with this vehicle as soon as we turned it on and i put the i put the heating on and the air conditioning you heard a little rumble yeah uh, the engine was just ticking over there at 800 rpm and literally just heated the cabin up instead of us taking the electric like uh our tx equivalent uh, as a hackney or a 100 percent electric vehicle it's cheaper to literally just have that engine making heat which blows elect uh, you know blows out with an electric motor yeah so that's what ford are doing is they're making vehicles because heat is the most expensive part of transport is your blowers your heaters yeah you don't really notice it in a diesel car because you're just like oh i do such and such miles per gallon on the motorway it does less oh, i didn't do too good that time and not realizing if they would have switched all their heat and blowers off they would have got more mpg yeah because the the load if you go onto your diesel car you put air condition straight away the revs go deep up straight away yeah. to make that electric that you need to power it and electric vehicles are no different yeah, yeah. just the same as when we were towing with vehicles um all these things are all weight related so if your vehicle does 50 miles per gallon towing uh something it does half because mm. I know that because I tow a caravan myself you know uh, I use my Q5 it's uh, averages on the motorway 7 speed at 54 miles per gallon I tow something and it's in about 23, 24 right and okay an electric vehicle will do exactly the same so if you're a mile per gallon on your computer so you always say 28 mile per gallon does that mean in real world you're getting double that yeah because of uh, you're using are you using half the time you're driving your car, technically it works out, you're using half electric, half petrol. And that's where it comes out. They're yeah, about to the they're, guide. they're about to I mean, the, the good thing is when you do put it into full petrol to charge up, you can drive a mile and you can you can charge up by eight, but only around town. Whereas on the motorway, it's it's you're just maintaining electricity. From, load. From the petrol And engine. the power that you make, you need it. So, so when people go like, oh, but when you're on the motorway, you're just driving the one liter engine's driving the car, but technically it's not, is it? Yeah, the one liter not, engine just, is just charging the battery enough right. to run the car. It's just basically giving the power straight to the motor, and that's where and that's where you say it is all electric. Oh, it's all electric. Yeah, yeah. So. The petrol engine is purely just made to um, like assist it yeah, in its runnings. Yeah. So you know your different modes. It's like uh, in your normal mode, 
uh, the engine is very responsive whereas you put it to full petrol it's restricted because it's going right okay I'm feeding my wheels electricity here but I'm also charging up so that's so where you need to put in a full petrol it's less when it's in full petrol mode don't get me wrong I mean just the way you drive it I've just drove it for an hour guys and it was it was lovely it was like driving a, a saloon car it was crazy the power is fine but if you add seven or eight people and you know seven people fully loaded in the back you go oh you know I need a little bit more power so yeah. that's the reason why Ford have made it that you can just charge it yeah so going into charging and this is the clever thing about the uh, plug-in yes you can dry charge it off a full petrol mode uh, right the way back up yeah and people will go oh well 30 miles is not good um, it's it's not enough mm. it doesn't matter all we're doing is making electric to take it in uh, over the day yeah and to give us more where the engine just is not coming on as much so you even uh, notice that the engine just cuts off as soon as you get to a set of lights yeah uh, just like a normal hybrid does and it just charges up as you slow down. I only noticed the engine like uh, I had the engine a couple of times pop in and out very rarely yeah. um, so when people say you've charged and you get 30 miles people think that you use those 30 miles and then you run on the petrol engine only which is not true is it? That's yeah, not true because it literally just regenerates itself all the day it's like a big dynamo. So if I just say I fully charged this and got the 30 miles and then ran it in hybrid mode yeah that means my mile per gallon from in the morning right through to maybe half my shift, maybe depending on the miles, would be really efficient. Very efficient. Compared to not having yeah. any EV battery. Exactly. Yeah. Um, and, you know, you would only, uh, if you are knowing, okay, I'm on my last job here, I've got uh, six miles to go, uh, sod it. I'll put it on full electric, run it completely out because it doesn't matter because you're going home to put it on on charge. Then yeah. do that because it's going to boost your MPG up over, over the day. Over the day. But it's you take your power when you need it. Yeah. So the clever thing is with the plugins is uh, it's EV and it, it can't be fast charged. So we need home charge solutions. Yeah. At terrace houses, which we're working on at this moment in time. I'll definitely cover that in another video because I've just, he's just showing me the designs for it and it looks fantastic. Mm -hmm. So that'll definitely be coming on in a different video. Oh, also with these plug-in hybrids, you don't need you technically don't need um, a a, like a, a charger at home. You can plug it into the wall, can't you? Like just a, off a plug socket, a normal uh, plug socket. Yeah, anyway, it yeah. can't go on an extension. It's got to have an external feed, so coming off a ring. So it's taking about the same electricity as a cow. Right. Yeah, so if everybody had a plug in in their road, everybody's making a, a cup of tea for four and a half hours. Wouldn't and it it's make, not any, make difference. any difference to a ring main. So plug ins are really good things. It's just the infrastructure for plug ins at this moment. It's restricted for only people who've got drive ins because they yeah. can't take that vehicle and fast charge it. Yeah, because yeah. Because it's not hasn't got a, a, a rapid charger. I either. understand. Yeah. So obviously it'd be a bit of a struggle if you haven't got a way of plugging it in overnight, right. really. Yeah. Brilliant. Is there anything else you want to cover? Um, no, I think we've covered it all. Yeah. To be honest, Matt, I think. Uh, yeah. Spot on, yeah. If anyone obviously is interested in getting one of these or um, speaking to Sean himself, there's obviously feel free to call Car and Cab. He does them on settle buys and he also does air uh, finance as well, don't you? Do. I think I might be getting one on finance myself personally, um, but we will see. So hopefully, you enjoyed the video, guys. And um, yeah, I'll definitely see you on the next one. Mm. Basically, yeah, uh, uh, 19,000 pound discount. So, oh. <laughs> That's a, a massive a point. Massive well, you know what, mate? I've just, yeah, yeah, I just yeah, yeah. remembered. Yeah, 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 one sec. All right, guys, just in there, it's a taxi. <laughs> now, what's going on here? I'll just, Sean, just give me a massive point there. Because um, I've, I've been looking myself to get a bus, and I've been, obviously want to compare X versus XL, and if it's worth it, because obviously they are expensive, right? This bus is £40,500, right? But because um, Sean has deals with manufacturers, that's connected, isn't it? Yeah, yeah it's because we convert them. Yeah, we get a better discount. So, and you, you can only sell to taxis, can you? Ta yeah, and tire hire. Drives. You can't sell personal people, can you? So the reason he's got those conditions is he gets them so cheap. So this car is actually, I had a look. It's about 61, 62, is it? Yeah. So there's sixty-two grand brand new. If you want to buy these with from leather. the showroom, what? That's with leather. With leather. Oh, all your new ones coming in, all, all dark leather. leather, all full leather, which is yeah. perfect, isn't it? So, um, yeah. So sixty-two grand. He actually does them for 20 grand cheaper. So the reason I'm really considering this bus is because I'm getting a 20 grand, 20 grand discount. So if I buy this, keep it for a few years and change my mind, I won't be in much negative equity. Because if you look at this bus on the auto side and now there's only, because they're brand new, there's only a couple 
of like six month old ones with like 10, 20,000 miles and they're selling for 45. And you can get a brand new one off Sean for 40. Listen guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. Hopefully more should be coming in the future. We'll see. And um, I'll definitely see you in the next one. Let me know in the comments what you think guys and I'll uh, see you soon. Goodbye. <laughs> Bye.